appreciate you coming in. We'll go ahead and get started. So, I, my name is Michael Mabe. Uh, Charles Prescott back here in the back. He's the dean of the School of Business. I am the dean of the School of Trades and Technology. And uh, Mr. Prescott will be uh, taking the last half of the session, sharing with you some things about the business program. As I said, I direct the uh, School of Trades and Technology. And um, we, uh, we've been here, my wife and I, this is my wife, Connie Mabe, and we have uh, been here at Crown for five years. And um, we, uh, just a brief introduction uh, about uh, the program and uh, our life. I've been in, involved in uh, trades and technology for many years, been teaching for 12 years, and as I said, as I said been here for five years. Dr. Sexton uh, started the college, you know, uh, I, I think we're celebrating our 25th year here uh, since uh, Dr. Sexton started the college and started out as a Bible college and training pastors, missionaries, uh, evangelists, and, um, and still doing that today, thank God. And, but after a few years, after the college began, he started, uh, the, he added the School of uh, Education. Uh, and then a few years later, added the School of Business, and then five years ago, added the School of Trades and Technology. And the School of Trades and Technology, along with all the other schools, has been a burden for Dr. Sexton for all these years to, tr to offer uh, training for young people, for students in any field, any direction that they feel like God is leading them. So all of these schools are expanding all the time to try to meet that uh, need that many students have and especially the trade school that I'm dealing with we currently have a, um, a program where we're training auto diesel technicians and uh, HVAC technicians HVAC is an acronym uh, standing for heating and air conditioning and ventilation uh, so we're training Students to be uh, automotive mechanics, being um, diesel uh, mechanics, being HVAC uh, technicians that work on heating and air conditioning in homes and businesses, and also we have a cosmetology program for the ladies, and uh, they are fully licensed uh, at, at graduation in, in a full cosmetology program. So, and we're looking to broaden those uh, programs to a full welding program, aviation, uh, nursing programs, um, uh, carpentry, uh, all the residential uh, construction trades such as uh, carpentry, plumbing, electrical, um, all of those uh, bricklaying, concrete, anything connected with the uh, construction. So, um, Anything we can do to help you, to uh, help you train, to serve God, we want to do that. And our session here today is uh, titled, Connecting Your Work with God's Work. Whether you're going to business, whether you're uh, a skilled laborer, whatever God leads you to do, we need to connect everything we do with the work of God. And that is the, uh, that's the big need of today. Uh, I believe, is connecting our work, whatever you do, with God's work. Because the work of God, what God is doing in this world, is the most important thing. And you and I need to get in on that. It's sort of like our speaker just said earlier. You need to find out what God's doing and get in on it. And that includes every believer, every Christian. We all need to be involved in the work of God. And just because we are a... Uh, mechanic, or we're a carpenter, or we're a cosmetologist, or we're a, uh, a nurse, uh, whatever God may directing you to do, doesn't mean that you're not a vital part of the work of God. And we need to be involved in God's work and connect whatever you're doing with the work of God. Um, as I said, my wife and I, uh, we've been here for five years. We taught at another college for seven years. And uh, before that, I was in business for myself for about 15 years, having an automotive and diesel um, repair shop. But 
involved in my career, not only in mechanicing or a technician for other uh, companies and having my own business, I was an aircraft uh, mechanic for U.S. Airways for 22 years, working on jet airplanes and repairing them, whatever the need uh, there was. And so being uh, involved in using those gifts that God had given me, given me, I, I tried to connect all of that with the work of God throughout my career. So since high school, uh, I've been involved in um, a trade, uh, either working with my hands or having my own business. I've been involved in the business world and uh, connecting that with, with God's work was so important throughout my career. There's a lot of churches that are small and doesn't, doesn't, can't afford a, a large staff to take care of all the things that need to be done in that church. Uh, working with the young people, working with the bus ministry, assisting the pastor in so many ways. The church may not be large enough to handle that, or maybe even the church is not even large enough to fully support the pastor. Well, those workers have to be laymen in the church who work for a living that puts them uh, their shoulder to the plow also right along with the pastor to make the work of God go forward and um, uh, as I share with you today I want to share you with some thoughts on how that we can connect our work with God's work whatever you may be doing or plan to do or feel like God wants to do with your life and um, as we think about that you know Sometimes um, we fail to realize that every single one of us, no matter what you do with your life, whether you are um, a tradesman of some type, a mechanic or a cosmetologist or a carpenter or uh, a nurse, an engineer, a uh, preacher, pastor, missionary, uh, school teacher, business person, uh, no matter what you do, with your life we're all called into the ministry every single one of us now we all have different callings we have all have different purposes we all have different gifts we all have different talents but every one of those need to be connected with the work of god to go forth and when you think about what is the work of god god's work is to reach the lost and to edify or uh, encourage the saints, reaching the world for Christ. So whatever you do needs to be connected through the local church, reaching people for Christ and seeing people grow in the Lord so that they can go back out. The Great Commission, go into all the world and preach the gospel, teach all nations, whatsoever I command in thee, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, and then teach them to go back out and do the same thing. That great commission, you and I, no matter what we do, we need to be a part of that. The Bible says in Acts 20, 24, if you have your Bibles, and I hope you have uh, something to make, uh, take some notes with, because I'm going to have you write down a few things as we go through. And I'm going to take, you know, maybe 15 or 20 minutes here, and then uh, Dr. Prescott's going to come and share with you some thoughts. But in Acts 20, 24, the Bible says, But none of these things move me. And if you have time sometime to study the previous verses before, you know, starting in verse 18 all the way through verse 23, if you will read those verses some other time, I won't take time to read them now. But when you come to verse 24, it says, but none of these things move me. So it's referring to the verses prior to 24 and some of the things that were mentioned there. And he's saying here that these things don't move me. These things don't control me. These things don't hinder me. These things are not causing me to get off track because I have a greater purpose. I have a greater vision. I have something else that is motivating and moving me these things that have been mentioned here, that usually are the things that get us off track. These things are not moving me. He said, but none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, 
so that I might finish my course with the joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. A couple of things in that verse I want to mention. First of all, he said, my course. Every single one of us have a course. We have a plan. We have a purpose. No, there's no uh, insignificant believers in God's family. Every one of us are vital to the success of the work of God. And we're wanting to connect our work, our life, with the work of God. So you need to realize, first of all, in making that happen, in connecting your work with God, God's work, you got to realize that you are important. You are vital to the work of God. And if you do not connect your life to the work of God, make the work of God a vital part of your life, no matter what you do, then the work of God is not going to go forth as well as it could without you. So you have a course, and with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus. Every single one of us have a ministry. What is your ministry? Think about it. You say, well, I don't feel like I've been called in the mission field. I don't, have, I don't feel like I've been called to be a Christian school teacher. I don't feel like I've been called to be a missionary or a pastor or a preacher. I don't guess I have a calling. That is so wrong. A lot of times when pastor mentions, I'd like to meet, meet with all of those who've been called into the ministry, I want to jump up and holler, that's me and every single one of us. But I know what he's meaning. I know he's meaning at that point, if you have been called at, into a uh, calling that involves uh, full-time ministry. I understand what he's meaning by that. But we're all uh, been called into the ministry. And every single one of us have a vital part in that. He, he, in Acts 20, 24, is not a verse just to preachers and missionaries. That's to every single one of us. And I, every single one of us have a ministry, and we've received that ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you want to connect your work with God's work, first of all, you got to realize you have a ministry, you have a calling, and you need to seek that out. Maybe you know already, well, God, I feel like you want me to uh, be a nurse, or God, I feel like you want me to be a, a technician of some kind, or I want to be in business, I want to be my uh start my own business or i want to be uh involved in business and and be a manager in a business and on and on you know, whatever god directs you to be then you be the best you can be at that and connect that with the work of god and there's three things when we think about connecting our work with god's work and these three things i'll give you these three things if you would write these three things down and then uh, I'll give you all three of them to start with. And then you can leave a space after each one of them so you can maybe write a little bit underneath one. First of all, it's Christ. When we think about connecting our work with God's work. Then number two, skip a couple of lines and then put number two, character. Skip a few more lines and then put down the third thing, commerce. Christ, character, and commerce. Christ, as I've mentioned already, has got to be the center of it all. He must have the preeminence. He deserves all the credit. He deserves all the glory. Uh, we're not our own. We've been bought with a price, young people. Christ has got to be all and everything in our lives. Uh, Colossians 1, 18, 19. I'll just read that for you. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. That is, in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all the fullness dwell. Jesus Christ needs the preeminence. He's got to be first. He's got to be first place in your life. Whatever you decide to do, you need to put Christ first in that. I am not a... Uh, mechanic who happens to be a Christian. I'm not a teacher here at Crown who happens to be a Christian. I am, uh, or someone else might say, I'm not a carpenter who happens to be a Christian. I am not a uh, cosmetologist who happens to be a Christian. 
I am a Christian mechanic. I am a Christian cosmetologist. I am a Christian carpenter. I am a Christian businessman. I am a Christian businesswoman. I am a Christian manager. Christianity, your, Christ, your relationship to Christ, comes first. And everything after that is related to your Christianity. You don't take off your Christian hat when you leave on Sunday mornings and go to work. No, when you leave the church on Sunday mornings, you actually put on more of your Christianity, so to speak. You can somewhat relax at church. You can, you, you know, it's easiest to be the Christian at church. But when you go out after church, during the week, whatever you're doing throughout the week, that's where your real Christianity needs to be uh, displayed and be that witness for him. So Christ has got to be the center of that. Number two, character. You got to have character. Uh, you got to not only talk like a Christian, you got to walk like a Christian. You got to be uh, a great example of that which Christ wants you to be. You can talk about Christ on the job all you want, but unless you have the character to live that out and people see that honesty, see that integrity, then it's going to be of no value. You can tell people all, all day long how much you love the Lord and how much they need to be saved and they need to walk with the Lord and they need to uh, come to church and then you are dishonest. You're not what you should be in front of them. You're better off probably not saying anything. That hypocritical lifestyle is really uh, taking away from all that you're saying about the Lord. We've got to have that character. Here at Crown, our, our trades program, our business program, and every one of our schools is built around uh, uh, three core things. First of all, we have an environment here that promotes integrity and character. We encourage that. Many of the things that we try to do here is encouraging character integrity. We also, uh, the second thing, we promote serving the Lord, being involved in the local church, being involved in ministry to help you get used to serving God, whatever you might do. And then we have the core, the Bible, of course, and then the solid training that you'd have in the business field or the trades you choose. That, that, that training that actually is second to none. So we thank God for that. But you've got to have that character. Being the vessel God would have you to be. No matter who you are, God is looking for a vessel that is fit for the master's use. Uh, the third thing is commerce. Commerce is a, another word that you may not be familiar with or is, hear as often, but Commerce means work, business, uh, you know, so I use that because it starts with the C. So you got Christ, character, and commerce, going out and uh, serving God in the workforce. And it is important. We, hard work is honorable, young people, and, and uh, uh, everybody who... Uh, need some way to to provide for their family and uh and it, and it usually involves work and isn't it better to have a good paying job or that you can sort your support your family in a very good way and the work of god so work is very important and there's certain things about work here or commerce that i want you to note and just uh, write down a few things maybe you haven't thought about uh, work will help you support your own family. The Bible says if we don't support our own family, if you don't support your family, you're worse than an infidel. Don't expect the government or parents or someone else to always uh, provide for you. There comes a point where you got to be, you got to man up or woman up and uh, take care of yourself and then take care of your family and provide for your family and the better you can do that the better you can uh the better off you are to be able to and be able to do more not be under the burden of debt and so forth so work is a great way to support your family work is also will help you support the work of god 
the 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 better you can provide for your family, the better you can uh, support your family, support the work of God. Giving your gifts and tithes to the Lord is so important. Seeing the work of God go forward. Work will help you meet the needs of others. Helping other people who are in need. Uh, so many times through my years, and I would love to help them if I could. I see that they really have a need, but I couldn't. Because, you know, my other financial burdens had me, uh, you know, nose to the grindstone. So you got to, you you know, the better you have the training, and all through my life I've improved in training, trying to get more and more certifications and license to help me provide more and more. And God's used that through the years. Uh, work will help you be a productive member of society. Instead of be a burden on society, you can be a productive member of society and uh, help uh, in that way. Number five, work will help you avoid sin. Being busy, getting you know idle uh, hands is the devil's workshop. You always you know get stay busy, work hard, and then the last thing that I can like to expound on. Before I turn it over to Brother Prescott, is the fact that work will give you a platform to witness for your Savior. And that's, I believe, one of the key things we need to think about. When you're at work, this is an opportunity for you to witness for the Lord. When you work when on the job or in your business or wherever you might go, then that's an opportunity. It's no accident that God placed you there. It's no accident that uh, this is, uh, you know, God's in control of all of our lives. So the people you're working beside, the ones that you're uh, involved with, that's a mission field for you. And this is a time for you to step up and be a witness. And through the years, God has given me platforms to uh, where I could share the gospel. And uh, not only through word verbally, but also my life and being a testimony for Christ. And everywhere you go, you're going to suffer some persecution as a Christian. Once they find out you're a Christian, many of your co-workers or uh, uh, people in business with, they won't put you to the test to see how uh, how real you are. And if somebody you've already been working in public jobs, maybe you've worked at uh, Chick-fil-A or some restaurant, you can see, uh, and, and Chick-fil-A would probably be one of the easier ones, but other restaurants or other places of business or other part-time jobs you may have had, you've probably experienced already some persecution if you were an outspoken Christian. And uh, so you, it's a great platform for you to witness Christ. I worked at U.S. Airways for 22 years, and it took me some years to develop that testimony among my coworkers. And I was able to see some of these men come to Christ and get saved. Some of them are serving God even today. Just talked to one the other night over the phone, called me. We hardly ever see each other anymore, but he stays in touch. And he was just thanking me for the influence I had in his life. And, uh, and it, you know, you could be a witness, a missionary at that place. I was at U.S. Airways. I was working there when 9-11, when the uh, attacks on the Twin Towers in New York was, you know, uh, many years ago. For many, Some of you were even born, probably. But uh, I was working at U.S. Airways in, in Charlotte, North Carolina. It's a large hub for U.S. Airways. There's about 5,000 employees that work there. For U.S. Airways, they got a school for pilots there. They got a school for flight attendants. They got a large maintenance base there, so it's a very uh, busy place for them there. And the station manager called me to his office the, the, on 9 11 that very day. Everybody was just had stopped work. Everybody was watching the TVs or on the radio, listening to what was going on. And he came to me and asked me. He says, "I want to call everybody together on Hangar 4." And everybody, he said, "I want you to speak to him." And I said, you know, "What do you want me to say?" He said, "Anything you want." He said, "Everybody is really down about this and devastated. Many people have relatives in the New York area that they haven't heard from." He said, "I just think we need uh, to get everybody together and, uh, and talk about this." And you know, he, didn't, he, he was sort of stuttering because he was not a believer, but he knew that God could help these people. And, uh, and I was so thankful that he came to me and asked me. What a great opportunity. I was scared to death. But I went up and God gave me an opportunity to share the gospel with all of those people. And I just plainly gave them the gospel about how Jesus Christ loved them and he could save them. And not only could he save them, but he'd give them peace and comfort that no one else could do. Had prayer with them uh, and uh, asked God to bless our country and all that. You know, it just was a great opportunity to share the gospel with everyone there. If I had not lived, and this is not a pat on my back, I'm just trying to give you an exa example. If I hadn't have developed over some years there that testimony, that platform, then I would have never even been asked to do that. And God would have not got the glory and the honor and the, and the opportunity to speak to the hearts of all those people. So there's so many ways that God could use you in a, in a mighty way. And, and so give your life to the Lord. Let him use you in whatever field, whatever opportunity God gives you. Uh, take that as an opportunity to witness for the Lord. And connect your work, anything you do, connect it with the work of God. Thank you very much, Dr. Prescott. Dr. Prescott, is, as I said, is the dean of our School of Business, and uh, he's going to take the last few moments here to share with you some things in particular about our business program here and um, how that, uh, that can be a help to you, and you could use that in your life uh, to connect 
uh, your work with God's work. And uh, we appreciate uh, all of you coming and being a part of it and then and Brother Prescott taking time to uh, share with you. You get plugged up here in just a minute. Any questions while we're waiting? Any questions about anything I've said? Any questions about the trade school in particular? Any programs that you're interested in that maybe we don't have yet? Yes, sir. Aviation, I, as I said, I was with U.S. Airways for 22 years, and I, I taught aviation for seven years at another college. So we're working very hard to get an aviation program going. It'll start out with maintenance, and it'll eventually evolve into flight training also. So, yes, sir. Yes, that is something we have actually looked at into. And uh, we actually have some people on staff already could could teach that, so... Yes, sir. Veterinarian. We are starting some medical programs, and the medical programs, we're going to be developing some science labs and biology labs and technology labs here in the next few months. And, uh, you know, even though we won't have a full veterinary program or a full, you know, RN program where you become a registered nurse, we will be able to provide the basic training for some of those medical programs so that you could come here and get your sciences get a, a good bible foundation along with that and then those sciences would transfer into whatever uh medical program you wanted to maybe pursue in a greater way yes sir yes that is a program we also have a teacher here uh, for that program also already he's uh, one of pastor's assistants that could teach that for us so that is something we've considered yes Anything else? Yes, sir. Yeah, well, I hadn't actually thought about the zoology, but anything connected with the medical field, you could get, uh, or any um, technology program like that, you can get much of the basics right here. And if it involves any major sciences and biology programs, and lab work, you could get some of that basic uh, core courses done here and then transfer. It's almost like, you know, if you're going to be a doctor, you can go somewhere to get the pre-med. You could get even some of those sciences here for some of those and get a good Bible foundation. The Bible foundation is good, young people, no matter where you go, no matter what field you get involved in, a good Bible foundation is critical. So maybe consider that when you get out of high school. It's to come here just for a period of time to get that Bible foundation. And then if we don't offer the full program that you need, you can go into that less uh, uh, kind environment and be able to stand uh, better because you have a greater Bible foundation to be that greater witness while you're there. And uh, a lot of young people go in right out of high school into some of these secular colleges, and they're just consumed by the worldliness, by the, uh, and, and because their faith is not quite as strong as they thought. Uh, my children, when they graduate from high school, even though they grew up in a Christian home all their life, in my home, and I felt like they were very solid uh, in their faith and in the Word of God, I would have not have uh, uh, been happy for them to go right into a secular college. Take a year or two after high school and get a good Bible foundation before you go into one of those. Yes, ma'am. Yes, we have. We, we've considered all of those. And uh, we've, we're looking at multiple things all at the same time and seeing what uh, doors God opens you know if we have uh, you know faculty on staff that already qualified to teach some of these things or our facilities would accommodate some of these things so we're looking at all those things constantly and see how God provides very good Dr. Prescott all right <clears throat> well we're glad you're here today and if there's any other questions we'll have a few minutes left at the end 
I need to move a little quickly today. Um, I came to know the Lord as my Savior at age 19 in the state of Florida, and uh, a preacher found me in a, uh, in a home that uh, foster children. And so one day he came to me and he said, Son, have you been saved and baptized? I was 19 years old. I said, No, sir, I was baptized in uh, May the 5th, 1974, but I was not saved until January of 1976. And he said, Well, then you need to be baptized after you're saved. I said, Yes, sir, I'd like to do that. He said, I'll be back in about 30 days uh, to this um, foster home, and I'll take you to a place we call Heaven on Earth in the, the state of Tennessee, in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And I said, I'll be ready. And 30 days later, Pastor Hershenroder took me to Chattanooga, Tennessee, and there I attended the Highland Park Baptist Church, and I met Dr. Lee Robertson. And it was there I was baptized and went to Bible college for the first time. Many of you are contemplating going to college somewhere. For the Lord, it was the best decision I ever made. I had scholarships to go anywhere in the world to college from my father, and our, my father was a very wealthy businessman. And he said, anywhere in the world you'd like to go, son, you can. But the Lord took me to a Bible college, and I was glad that he did that. And I got to meet Dr. Clarence Sexton there for the first time. And I worked in the bus ministry for, with him many, many years ago. And that sort of stayed with my life. He's talking about character. I've been a banker for over 30 years prior to coming here five years ago. And the very first thing we look at when we're looking at a business owner that comes into the bank to borrow is their character. Their character is the very first thing we look at, then their capacity, and then their collateral. There's three C's in credit. There's actually five that we teach you here in the business school. So let me just cover a couple things here in the school. And um, well, we'll, we'll walk through it verbally. Um, a couple things here in the program that we have for small business and entrepreneurship is this. We want you to find God's place in your life in His work. Uh, in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7, if you're taking notes, we've got a couple of minutes left, 2 Timothy 1, 7, I want to share my life verse with you and connect it to the business side of it. And um, hopefully that will help you. 2 Timothy 1, 7 says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And so the power that comes from God is what separates us to Him when we receive Christ as our Savior. And while you're studying here in the Bible College, we're going to teach you about finance and accounting and economics and all those kinds of things that relate to every kind of business that runs in the United States. If it has cash and cash flow and operates, it will operate on these principles that we teach here in the Bible College. We teach God first and His power and His Word, just like in the outline. Number one is power. Power comes from the Lord. If, if everything begins with God and ends with God. He's created all things. And He's given us knowledge and wisdom and understanding and skills and creation. You heard about earlier today. He's created us in His image for a purpose. And no one is created like you for the purpose God has for you. So the first thing is the power of God that comes from the Lord Jesus Christ that indwells you. Okay. The second thing is the love of God. The love of God is immutable and unchangeable and everlasting. And the distinctive Christian who's in business, you'll see the power of God in their life and you'll see the love of God in their life. Okay? And then the third thing is this word sound mind, which means, by the way, a disciplined mind. Now, when you're coming to college, you're going to hurdle courses. All right? I call it hurdling. Everybody, anybody run track in here, run hurdles? You run hurdle. When you take various classes in math and science, like you're doing in school where you're at, it uncovers your gifts and talents and abilities that God has given you. And then you can dedicate those to the Lord. So here at a Bible college studying business, where, by the way, we give you internships in real businesses. We have over 400 of them in the city that hire our students. We allow you to go into the businesses and work inside those companies. But the power of God should be in your life the love of God should be in your life and a disciplined mind, a sound mind. You heard the speaker talk about the mind of Christ today, applying your mind and heart to the Word of God so Christ can be seen in you who's the hope of glory. Well, while you're here with us, it's no different if you choose to come to this college and study in the trades or in the business program, is your mind and heart needs to be exercised for the glory of God. And we give you the tools and the skills that are attached to your gifts and talents and abilities God's given you 
that can make you successful. I've spent a whole life working in the church in teaching the Bible as a deacon in the church, as a lay preacher in the church. I've been the treasurer of a very large church. After spending over 30 years in banking, I've financed every kind of business you can imagine inside this economy, um, companies up to 500 million. So that when we teach you here these principles and practices, we teach you them God's way, not the university worldview way. We teach you God's way, okay? Any kind of business, you name it. Hospitals, doctors, lawyers, engineers, tradesmen, auto dealers, all of them, I've financed them. I've been on their boards, I've helped them. As a Christian, with a testimony for the glory of God so that others could see Christ in me, the hope of glory. And I can't tell you the number of times I've sat behind my desk as a business professional and this question came up. Why are you so different? I had a man sitting in front of me worth $100 million sitting in front of my desk during the recession who had lost everything. He had $20 million in his bank account and it went away. And he looked at me and he said, Charles, what would you do? I said, I look to the Lord. So immediately the Christian can turn someone to the power of God. So there I gave a testimony of my salvation and a witness to this gentleman who was very comfortable in his riches and had lost them and suddenly had, was, had nowhere to go. He felt totally isolated because he had lost everything he had worked for in the electronics world. He owned Recaton Electronics Company and sold it and went in the real estate business and the real estate busted here a few years ago and he lost everything, all of his liquidity and everything. And he came into the bank as a very humble person. So there I was as a banker who was a Christian who knew the Lord, talking to a very wealthy man, a very intelligent individual, but lost, that needed Christ, he needed eternal life. And I was able to share that with him and his son-in-law who sat in my office, young Jewish boy. Uh, sat in my office. So I could tell you story after story like that where you're able to be a testimony in the business world. As Brother Mabe said earlier, a calling to Christ is a calling where you are and what you're doing and who you are for the Lord. Now some are pastors, some are preachers, and by the way you can be a preacher and be any occupation, just giving the testimony and the witness of the Lord and not necessarily be a pastor. I've been an assistant pastor in the church as well and work with pastors to help them. And so my gifts and talents and abilities are in the administrative area and in the financial area, in the management area, those types of things. I did build swimming pools when I first came out of Bible college and poured concrete. So I've been in that and, and framed houses and things like that. And then as life progressed and I met my dear wife, I've been married to 36 years. I met her September the 7th after I finished Bible college in my first church I served in Longwood Bible Baptist Church right outside of Orlando, Florida. I met her on September the 7th, 1980 at 6 o'clock. She was sitting in the third pew back on the left-hand side, about three people in. I remember exactly where she was as I looked across the church that day. I was up front helping the pastor. In that very church, after Bible college, I worked the bus ministry and I started a Bible institute for that pastor in 1980. And I had eight preacher boys studying in a Bible institute. So I've always been a teacher. And there I met her. And that was the best day after salvation in my life. And after that, we were married six months later. And uh, she's right across the street taking care of Mrs. Jones' little boy, Titus, today. She loves children and working with small children. She spent 29 years in that field, went to elementary ed school, finished her degree, and spent 29 years in Christian day schools and preschools. And so she has little Titus today. He's three years <coughs> old, and that's making her day. She's loving that with that little fellow. But what I would say is that the power of God starts first in your life through salvation. Then the love of God, which fills that, comes into your heart, as it says in John 3, 16. And then the matter of a disciplined life, a disciplined life. And you know the Bible says if you don't work, you don't eat, right? So work is ordained by God. Use about 174 times. Work is ordained by God. He ordained it. There's over 2,000 verses in the Bible, if you sit in some of my classes, that talk about business and administration in the Bible. And there's individuals involved in that, whether it's Moses or Joseph, all the way through the Bible. And there's some unusual names you probably wouldn't recognize, but you'll learn them if you come here and decide to study. But the key is dedicating and devoting your whole life. I spent 10 years in the military also. I was, I'm a Desert Storm veteran. I was in military intelligence in the beginning at 18 years of age in Fort Devens, Mass., in a computer compound, working on high-speed computers. 
and working with, you know, gathering intelligence from what was called the Iron Curtain back then and feeding that information to the Pentagon so that our troops could move and knew what they were doing. So I did that as a young man. And then I went on into combat support and served in Desert Storm. So I had 10 years in the military. Then I taught for the University of Phoenix for 17 years, the largest private university in the world with over 500,000 students. I taught 29 different courses during the day and during the night, MBA students, undergraduate, and graduate. And then I started in the mail room where a Baptist deacon hired me right after Bible college when I applied for my first job, when I met the love of my life, knew I needed to get to work. My dad said, go down there and fill out an application, get a job. <laughs> and, he, and so I got the job and a Baptist deacon hired me weighing mail in the mail room. I started weighing mail in the mail room and taking out the trash and changing the light bulbs in the bank. And then proof, bookkeeping, operations. And I went all the way to the president of the bank. I've been president of two banks. And I spent 30 years in that industry through 10 institutions and worked through every single position and job all the way through as the Lord allowed me to do as a Christian, knowing the Lord, raising three kids, and as a family with my wife, serving in the local church all those many years, helping pastors. This happens to be the largest one I've come to, a 7,000 member church with a college here, 250 acres of properties and some $50 million in assets from the banking side or the, or the accounting side um, that God has taken here and invested for the glory of God so that you would have a place to come. And not only you, but many others. And each year we have the privilege of 12 to 1400 to 1600 teenagers from all across the country coming to youth congresses here. And we're, we're glad you're here and thrilled you're here. But we do wanna share the burden of our heart that all these things, as the Bible says, you're the sum told the things you've been becoming in Christ. The sum told the things you've been becoming for such a time as this, as Queen Esther would say in the Bible. And that's what's in your life to this point in time. Mr. Mabe and all of that experience in many, many years, when you walk into a classroom, he can pour that into your heart and into your mind and, and those gifts and talents and abilities connect to that, you'll find your career placement for the glory of God. You come into my classroom and finance or management or any of our subjects that we have in the business field, which by the way, there's 15 million people working that across the United States, employs over 50% of the population is the degree program we've got here. So it's powerful, it's dynamic, it's very broad. If you like design, we have web design where you can build websites. If you like project management, numbers and spreadsheets, we have a project management. Those things lead to certifications external to the college which begin to produce jobs that begin at 50,000 a year to 70,000 a year and can go into six figures, over 100,000 a year. Now it's not all about the money, it's about the Lord and then taking the money and investing in the local church and in your family for God's glory and helping pastors accomplish the Great Commission, as was mentioned earlier. So that can be a blessing in your life and the power in your life. Raise three kids. I have two daughters and a son. They've all finished college, all successfully placed, um, know the Lord, and my son especially is in a, serving in a church in Florida that we came from in the media ministry. He loves media <laughs> things. So I'm curious now, you've heard a little bit about of our background and things of that nature. I went all the way through undergraduate school, master's program, PhD program, been all through that, been to college, it seems like most of my life, 16, 17 years. I'm a 4.0 student. I retain most everything I hear. I just have to hear it and it stays with me. And um, didn't study much, just the way it, the gifts and abilities that God gives you to be used for his glory. Now let me tell you this. He mentioned a gentleman earlier today in his speech, an intellectual from California who's a mathematician. The IQ is very finite, and we all have one. You have an intelligence quotient that's been given to you through creation, through your DNA. But there's something far more powerful in your heart, going back to this passage, power, love, sound mind. And that's the Holy Spirit quotient, which I tell my students. You cannot measure the Holy Spirit inside of you. And he will guide you and conform you to the image of the Son of God within your heart and in your life and towards the path that he's chosen for you to be a witness. And you can magnify him like no one else as a Christian. So, anyhow, the key is knowing the Lord and yielding everything unto Him, whether it's our mind, our heart, our emotions, our wills, our desires. Like the preacher said this morning, your spirit, you love the Lord thy God with thy spirit, soul, mind, body, all of it, strength, emotion, all of that. And by the way, as you pour your heart and life into the Lord, guess what happens? He pours His life through you and others can see Christ in you, the hope of glory. 
It was the youth pastor that brought me to Christ. When I looked in his eyes as a 19-year-old boy, I said, Bob, what is it that you have that I don't have? I've got this car. I've got all these things. Father's provided. But I don't have that. Father had given the gymnasium at the church that all the kids were coming in. And I walked in that gym one day, and there he was. He said, it's the Lord. That's who I have. And it wasn't but a few days later that I trusted Christ as my Savior and went from death to life that was mentioned earlier today in John 17, 3. So I hope to be an encouragement to you in our program here. And uh, how many of you feel like you're called to in the, in the business area, any kind of business area? Okay. What particular area? Um, oh, wonderful. Very good. Very good. So we can prepare you for that here. We've got the programs here in accounting and history and those kinds of things. We don't have pre-law yet, but we have the other areas. Someone else? The business world. We got one minute left or so. Yes. We fielded a lot of questions earlier, so let's finish up with that. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Very good. We've. What kind of business is it? Very good. We teach online marketing here and web development, web design. We've had students come and go back and work in their parents' companies, and I have one in Naples that did that. Has gone back to help his father in the high-end tile business in Naples and revolutionized their company with websites and online marketing and that sort of thing. Someone else? Any questions at all now open for Mr. Mabe or myself? Any questions at all? I had a lot of questions earlier. It's good to see you. It's nice to have an overwhelming crowd in here. I know you're hungry, so we need to pray. It's 10 till, and we've got to close right now. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for these wonderful young people and the parents that are here in the room. We pray you bless them, Lord, and guide them to your perfect will for their lives. Thank you that you've brought them this way in the Youth Congress. And I pray, Lord, they'll go home with all these solid answers in their heart.